We're going to watch as I get smarter Saturdays. We're going to watch the biggest fails in Wall Street bets history. A lot of the time I find myself getting wrapped up in things that aren't really that important. I'm sure all of you guys can relate to this feeling. And they can live rent free in your head if you let them. However, sometimes all it takes is a little perspective to recognize how good you really have it. And what I've found is that there's no better way to give yourself this perspective mm. than by looking at crippling financial losses on Wall Street bets. In reality, I just like looking at these losses because it's fun. The thing I've been obsessed with lately, I don't know why, it's been a hobby of mine even after Marketing Monday, is I, I just keep looking back and finding ever more ridiculous examples of obvious signs that we were in a crypto bubble. <laughs> I just keep looking at articles and videos like if you just scroll back to things from like late last year, you can find so many things where it's like, like, like TikTok investors talking about how you can get a free house by putting all your money in Tether, getting a free 20% on it, taking out a massive loan on a house, putting that mortgage into, there's like so many fucking things and they're all like unchallenged at the time. So today we're going to take a stroll down memory lane, looking at some of the most violent financial losses you have ever seen or will ever see. Oh my god, they're so bad. After all, it's just numbers on a screen that don't actually translate to anything in real life. Right? No, but no. if you're new to this whole investing <laughs> stock true. market kind of thing, <laughs> this is probably going to be somewhat jarring. The losses we're about to look at are the quickest and most violent way any average person could ever lose money. It would actually be harder to go to the bank, get hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash, drench it in gasoline, and light it on fire. Like, that would take longer. So prepare yourself physically yeah, and true. mentally, because we're about to visit the graveyard of Wall Street bets. We have to learn about the architecture of financial losses. Not get smarter. We're gonna get smarter. I'm guessing a lot of you newcomers are probably going to be asking, how? How could you lose so Options. much fucking money? Calls and puts. that are remarkably consistent throughout the entire video. Okay. In financial losses, we see a few different patterns. Let's start out here. This is just a <laughs> classic Wall Street bets loss chart and a pattern we'll most likely see often throughout. This is my investment in fucking Neo. <laughs> uh, it's actually funny how perfectly this represents investor psychology. I feel like I can tell you the exact thought process at all of these points. So what happened here? Let's use technical analysis artwork <laughs> technology to try to uncover the truth. Dinosaur we can pattern. break this down into a few psychological phases. Let's start here at the beginning when you first started investing. The reason doesn't really matter. What matters is that this is the first and last time you'll make money doing this. <laughs> You've probably got a good diversified portfolio of blue chip companies that are heavily correlated with the S&P. Now, what you're seeing right here, I like to call experimenting with the dark arts. This little <laughs> spike right here, it's so funny how accurate this is. This is you discovering options. A brief view into a world that you had no idea was even possible. You can never this is exact. I mean, this happened to me. Thankfully, I had way less money. It happened to me when I was at Twitch. I remember I went to E3 and I had to work. I had to work like 18 hour days. I was at the E3 booth and I had to do social coverage for every announcement. So I was working an insane amount of time. And I was also, because I was up all the time, I was checking uh, fucking stocks all the time. And I got a little, I had a little bit of money. Again, I was paid way less back then. I put options. Uh, I put a call option on um, IQ which is Chinese Netflix and it shot up and I made like, I'm not kidding. I made like eight grand in a few hours. You know, I, 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 I did, I fucking amazed. And I was so happy and I was like, yes, this is so huge for me. Fuck. I was just, I was so pumped. I made so much money. And then I was like, dude, I figured it out. I am literally better than Warren Buffett. <laughs> I am literally the world's greatest investor. I see things people don't see. And so I took that money, uh, 8k, and I added more money and I put it all in again right before the next morning on IQ. I did like another, <laughs> I did like another instant IQ because like they were about to announce something. I think it was earnings or something like that. And I was like, it's going to be good. I know it's going to be good. Let's let it ride. Let's double it up. And so I put it all in on IQ and it tanks and I lose 12K in a morning. I lose all my 8K plus an additional 4K, which I, you know, that's a lot of money, especially for me at the time. You know, me and Ari were just dating at the time, but that was like my money. Like that that was that was money that I needed for things we were gonna do. And it I remember walking around like a zombie. Like I feel like I got punched in the fucking stomach. I was walking around like a zombie all the rest of E3, probably because I also got no sleep. And I was just like, fuck. 
I, but I actually, I swear to God, I thank God that happened. I am so happy that happened because I've, I've gotten, I mean, it made me learn so much more. I got a lot smarter about it. I got a lot safer about it. I got a lot more diversified. <laughs> I stopped messing around with options. It's like you can use a small amount of money to make a very large bet is, what, is basically what it is. Instead of buying a share, you're just making a bet that the, the stock's going to go up or down. It's, it's more like gambling than it is like investing. So like a call option is where, where you think it's going to go up and a put option is you think it's going to go down. It's basically just gambling with bad odds. <laughs> with like worse odds than a fucking casino most of the times. And with some options, like if you just buy a call option that you think it's going to go up, you, you're only going to lose what you bet. So you're risking whatever you bet. But with some options, you can lose more. You can lose, you have an uncapped amount you could lose. <laughs> like if you, if you sold a call, Theoretically, you could lose infinite. Like there's 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 no limit to the amount you could lose if it goes wrong, if the trade goes wrong. And that's where people get really in trouble. You're learning so much. I promise you, this is the end of your financial career. I like to call this period volatility exposure therapy. The market doesn't want to scare you away with big volatility. You'll disable options forever. Instead, it's going to let you test the waters a little bit, just enough to push you into the- Wait, with how the market's been going, couldn't you just print money by doing puts? So some people have. Puts are, again, puts are a bet that the market will go down. And if you had done them, you would have made a ton of money in the past few weeks. The problem is with any option, you have to be right, not only about the direction of the stock or market. You have to know that's going to go up or down. You also have to know the timing. That's why it's, it's nearly impossible. It's literally gambling. You have to know not only where it's going to go, but when. And that's what makes it impossible. So, and you can't, no one can know. No one knows the actual fucking timing and direction. So, it really only works as part of a larger, larger portfolio where it's like balancing the risk of something else. The next phase, <coughs> the generative risk-taking behavior. That one's pretty self-explanatory. And it leads us yeah. into the next- Unless you're Nancy Pelosi. And even still, <laughs> Nancy Pelosi recently did a big fat call option on uh, Google, Facebook, and some other tech companies and lost, her, lost fucking massively on it. <laughs> They're down like 70% her calls. So she even Nancy Pelosi has fucking failed on options and she has some insider info. Jacked to the tits. You're convinced you are Warren Buffett. You have a money printer in your pocket. Literally this what I said. This phase usually lasts a few hours to days and it leads us to the final phase, imminent destruction. Now, despite what you might think, imminent destruction doesn't happen here. Imminent destruction happens here. The moment you enable options trading in yeah. Robinhood. Yeah. Yeah. This is incredibly important to yeah. understand. Yeah. So that's a brief overview of the most common financial loss chart. Understanding each of the phases can help us determine the psychology involved with losing hundreds. One thing I will say, this is the last thing I'll say about this. Whether you have public or you have Robinhood or you have any stock trading app, there is an option in those apps to uh, enable basically leverage where they'll give you a loan that you can invest. All I can say is never do that. Never, 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 never do that. There's no situation where that's good. That is how you blow up your life because you can lose the money you put in and it's going to suck and it's going to be a gut punch. But end of the day, you can recover from that. Gambling on margin, basically on debt, means you can lose more than you have and you will owe interest on the money you don't have and you're going to get margin called and it's going to like destroy your credit. It's, it's so bad. The risk is far outraise the rewards. Do not use uh, gambling. Do not use uh, fucking leverage in Robinhood or in public or anywhere else. Now let's get into the most violent financial losses you will ever see. But quickly to introduce this. What if I delete the app? Oh shit. Never mind then, free money glitch. <laughs> oh, you can just delete the app. They'll never find you. You're good. Oh, what the fuck? I never thought of that. Just take out a fat, massive loan as much as they'll give you. Punt it all on a stupid option and then delete the app. That's easy. Holy shit. Some of you might not know this, but a lot of the headlines you see in whatever finance app you use are generated by AI. And for any of you that were scared AI was going to take over the world, all it takes is one look at these headlines to realize we're not going to be seeing Terminator anytime soon. <laughs> Most media outlets don't give an accurate representation of what's really going on in the market and are sometimes blatantly wrong. Yeah, most articles you see about the market are exactly right. They're shit. And what's worse is, you know how like if you have your phone and you just swipe to the left and you start seeing like, you know, like news articles, just like the feed you can get of news, that that feed gets an insane amount of traffic. And so what people are doing is, what companies are doing is just literally stealing other companies' articles. They're like literally having AI rip someone else's article, change random words like with a thesaurus, re-upload it with a, like a, a different or better picture, 
and just try to fucking yoink the traffic on this page. So half the time you're scrolling through this, it's like four or five ripped articles that they didn't even write. It's fucking crazy. Uh, publishers are furious and they're trying to crack, like to get Google cracked down on it. But Google doesn't give a shit because they get money other ways. Uh, try to avoid it if you can, but obviously it's, it's on Google really to fix it. Let's begin here. We've got another classic $45,000 loss. It's okay. You know, 45 grand is like that awkward amount where it's not really enough to justify buying anything cool or balling out. So it's almost- 45 grand is a lot of money. That is- <laughs> I mean, for Wall Street Bets losses, I can understand calling it normal. 45 grand loss is fucking crippling. That's so much money more convenient to just not have it. That was obviously the thought process here as well. I don't really know what to use it for, so I'm just gonna lose all of it. As you can see, <laughs> we've got the increase in volatility from options trading here, followed by- I the mean, with 45 grand, you could buy a hundred thieves Lexus. <laughs> that, isn't that the point? He said there's nothing you can buy with it. That's what everyone wants. We wanna save up 45 grand and then spend it on a hundred thieves Lexus. So if you lost it, the, that, that's like you've lost your chance at everyone's dream car. Implosion classic. The silver lining with this is that if you felt comfortable gambling with short-term options, I'm guessing your lifestyle isn't taking a massive hit from this. Okay, so there's a lot to break down here. We can see already $50,000 has evaporated. This was another GameStop implosion. The guy bought $90,000 of out-of-the-money calls expiring in two days. For those of you who may not fully understand what that means, I joke a lot about donating money to Wall Street on this channel. That's usually a joke, but this is actually like taking $90,000 out of your bank account. I mean, this is what I did with IQ, but for way, way less. It was, it was like a fucking two-day expiration. It was awful. Calling Goldman Sachs on the phone and saying, <laughs> hey, I want to wire you $90,000. And the funny thing is that would actually take longer. <laughs> this is a perfect example of why it's incredibly important to recognize that buying a call isn't the exact same as going long on the stock. This was posted on March 11th, right at the peak of the second GameStop rally. The problem is that a giant rally like this increases the implied volatility of GameStop options so much that the options market is literally pricing in 100% moves in GameStop's <laughs> share price. This is a good lesson. It shows us that before putting $90,000 into something, reading even one Investopedia article might save you a lot of money. <laughs> all right, an 18 year old making a hundred grand with AMC calls, then losing it all. Pretty classic oh. story of Wall Street bets degeneracy. What is a hundred thousand? Oh, dude, can you imagine getting an extra 100K at 18? You're just set. You're set for your fucking 20s, dude. You can just get a job and coast. And you, and you, you'll, you'll never have to worry. It'll cover all your extra shit. Until you have to worry about like a house and, and marriage and kid. Like, you're just set. And instead, you punted it. That's actually sad. The exit strategy. The thing all of us know we should have but never actually end up using. With this, we really once again have to beg the question, what would have been an acceptable return? If 10xing your money in a matter of weeks wasn't, <laughs> is there any return that would have ever made you... <laughs> that usually so true. Yeah. If you, <laughs> if you put money in at 18 years old, and it 10Xs and you make a 100K profit. <laughs> when did you plan on stopping? It's like you fucking went to a roulette table, put it all on red, hit, double down, let it ride, <laughs> hit, double down, let it ride, hit, double down, let it ride, hit, and then fucking, let's go again, <laughs> but on black. <laughs> it's like, dude, fuck, you have, to, you have to take your fucking chips. This is so funny. Apparently at Fidelity, if you lose thousands of dollars, they send you a nice letter checking in to see if what you're doing is, you know, consistent with your investment objectives. <laughs> and to see if you're still alive. This is why we wanted to make you aware that last month, 63 trades were executed in your above referenced account and the overall equity value of your account decreased by $438,000. See, at least you get an actual certificate. <laughs> an actual letter. Oh, God damn. Good god damn, dude. What if you try to do it? You pull a fucking credit card charge. You try to be like, I never did that. <laughs> Not my trades. Uh, refund, please. Silver what lining. a beauty. <laughs> Hanging over the fireplace. Nice conversation start. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad, dude. Oh, my fucking god. Degenerate this amount of money. I'm just lose. curious. What, what were you buying this year? 
$400,000 to exactly zero. Impressive? This was posted in November of 2020, which means the S&P returned over 50% in the six- <laughs> k in like the biggest bull market run in fucking our lifetimes it were every, even the stupidest people on tiktok investors were making money everybody in that period was making money and you lost half a mil it's months prior to this like looking at this it's actually remarkable how consistently you were able to lose money in a time when the s p returned so much won't <laughs> go so back funny. to robin hood painful half a million dollar loss you know, Warren Buffett said something about how consolidation builds wealth and diversification protects it. I don't know if this is what he was talking about. Going into this with out of the money options just seems like a recipe for disaster. And of course, the clowning ensues in the comments below. Yeah, this is crazy. So yeah, you, yeah, he had $500,000 and he basically bet on a quick recovery in airline stocks. And that's, where the, that's the risk of options because he had to be right on timing. Airline stocks have recovered from the deep, the lowest points of the pandemic, but buying, you know, out of the money options with a short time frame that they're going to fucking rapidly bounce back is like just punting your money away. And yes, if it works, you make the reason people do options is because you put up a small amount up front and you can make like a hundred X profit. If, if it happens, if it actually happens and your fucking crazy call comes true, it's like betting on fucking number 33 in roulette. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If it hits, you're great, but it's not a good strategy. What, what was the thought process here? I'm genuinely interested to know. GME YOLO FOMO, my second mortgage. 35K to 5 mil to 300K. I will not sell. He lost $4.7 million. 35K to 5 million and didn't cash out. That's, that's a level of greed that I don't even, I can't even wrap my mind around. That's a level of greed that's fucking crazy. You could Obviously, Why wouldn't you, you at least can... cash out a mill, dude? Just take a mill off the table. Then at the end of the day, if you love to gamble, at least you got a mill. The situation, another GameStop millionaire turned $35,000 into 5 million. This is a perfect example of if it's good enough to screenshot, it's good enough to sell. I think this comment just sums it up pretty well. 5 million invested into an index fund returns an average of over $300,000 per year on autopilot. I mean, fuck, throw that money into triple A corporate bonds with a 2% yield and collect $100,000 per year for the rest of your life. Yep. Do anything. Guaranteed. Anything except what you did. Is there anything we can take away from this? Well, from everything I've seen, it seems like no matter how much money you have, it will never be enough. <laughs> Especially when it's just numbers on a screen. What's one common trait between all of these losses? Greed. Icarus flying too close to the sun or whatever. If it's good enough to screenshot, it's good enough to sell. An True. ancient piece of Wall Street True. wisdom that we all need to remember sometimes. <laughs> Create a solid exit plan with all of your trades and stick to it. Or just buy index funds and actually make money. But where's the... Well, not right now, but we'll see. Long term. Um, cash is losing money to inflation. Stocks are tanking in general. Even fucking bonds are taking, dude. Gold's, gold, gold's holding, but, uh, you know, it's not great to be a gold bug. Uh, gold is holding. And then oil. Oil, oil, gas, energy, they're all fucking spiking. But it's it's tough because, like, a lot of their the new situations have been kind of priced in. So you could be buying, you know, with without much upside. A lot, a lot of risky options. I'm in cash mostly. I sold basically every stock that I had in November of last year, right after the Evergrande stuff. I got freaked out and I uh, just ended up selling everything. Thank God, because uh, I want to get a house eventually. <laughs> and so I knew that. Uh, but I'm still losing money to inflation. So I got to figure I got to figure out what I'm going to do. Anyway, that was a great video. I think um, I think that's true. Yeah, if it's good enough to screenshot, it's good enough to sell. But also, you know, probably don't do it. <laughs> it's, it's not going to it's not going to work out well, bro. Check it, check it.